oh, there's just so much going on, so many people need me. I wish I could just snap my fingers and get out of here. Whoa, St. John's Ward, huh? <laughs> awesome, wow, I feel better already. Now all I gotta do is gear up. St. John's Ward, Hypericum perforatum. It's summer solstice and St. John's Ward is in full bloom. This sunny flower has a panacea of uses. In fact, it was one of the native European herbs that they brought over to this part of the world in order to be used as medicine, and it has tons of different benefits. In fact, it's in the top 10 herbs used in Western herbal medicine. Why? Because it has mood-altering substances in it that help work with depression. Even these little bees are happy. It's pretty easy to identify this plant by its bright yellow flowers with five points and its opposite leaves on the stem. If you look straight down the stem, you'll see that it looks like a perfect cross. This is one of those doctrine of signatures for how it works as a protective plant. The Latin name Hypericum perforatum can be broken down so we can get the origin of how this plant was used as medicine. Hypericum really means to place above the altar. So this is a protective plant that we use to place above the altar. Perforatum has to do with its leaves. If you look at them in the sunlight, you can see that there's tiny little perforations. These little perforations were also a doctrine of signature for how it might work on a psychic level to help protect us from witchcraft or voodoo or other people's psychic energy. So if we're feeling overwhelmed by people, this might be the right herb for us. St. John's wort is used for depression most commonly. In fact, it's the number one herb used for that. Now why is this? How does that work? It is said that St. John's wort captures the sun's energy and can help us in those winter months when we get a cloudy situation. So in some ways, it's like bringing sunlight through the clouds. So people with SAD, or Seasonal Affected Disorder, can find this plant to be very beneficial. There's been a lot of studies done in Europe on this, and it's now been considered that it's an alkaloid in it, the hypericin, that is causing the main effect in this way. But you know, there's some debate that some of the other chemistry, like the flavonoid groups, are really helping bring that forward too. So back in the 80s, this was never used for things like depression. Even though it's very obvious when you're picking it and connecting with it, that it has this kind of benefit, but really it was shown to have much more of these antiviral and antibacterial properties, working with nervous system conditions and pain as well. There's been a lot of research done on this plant. In fact, the National American Cancer Institute has even claimed that this might be a benefit and a cure for cancer. They're also using this with major viral infections, especially retroviruses like HIV and AIDS. This is shown to be very beneficial for a lot of people, although you gotta take a pretty big dose and there are some counterindications, i.e. too much of this in 3% of the population can create photosensitivity. So even though it captures the sun, for some of us, it might actually create photosensitivity. So be careful. At the same time, this might be the perfect herb for you if you're dealing with a viral infection of some kind. So we're harvesting these flowers today to make them into a macerated oil. We're gonna wilt them down and turn them into an oil that we can put on topically. It can also be taken internally, but we're gonna make salves and oils and blend them with other oils because this is one of the most beneficial healing herbs on the skin. In fact, it has a whole panacea effect for skin conditions, whether it's anything from acne and psoriasis to pain to burns, especially burns. That's a useful thing, nerve damage, any of these kind of skin conditions, ulcerations. So you can say I got a sprain or a strain, you can rub it on externally to treat stretch marks in pregnant women, or swelling hemorrhoids, or aching swollen veins even. In many traditional medicine systems, they use energetics to describe the herb. In this case, St. John's Wort has that sweet, cooling, bitter, slightly astringent quality, meaning that it's gonna help tone and tighten the tissues and dispel toxins out through the bottom. It's also said in Chinese medicine to affect the meridians of the lungs, the intestinal tract, the bladder and kidneys, and the liver. Oh, one of my favorite things about it. You see this little bug? These little bugs tend to follow the St. John's Wort wherever they go. They are allies. Now I know they eat them, but I also like to think of plants and their little predator bugs as allied species, creating a whole ecosystem connection. All right, here you go, little guy. There you go. He'll find his way. Hmm. Hmm. You know, the first thing I like to do when I come to a new patch of plants I haven't connected with since last year is nibble. Hmm, and just connect with that plant's energy. Thank you, little guys. 
Often I like those seeds in that pollen of those plants. If I can find that piece, that's what I like to connect with. Here, give it a try. One thing I can say for sure about this plant is when I harvest St. John's wort, I am always in the best mood ever. For some reason, just picking this plant makes me feel happier than ever. Oh, am I glad to be outside today. When we're using St. John's wort, we want to use the aerial parts of the plant. Now often that means the open and unopened flower heads. So usually what we'll do is we'll take our scissors, bunch it up, and just snap that bit off. What you'll see on the plant here is that we've left some and all these little ones will start to pop up and you'll see a second flowering later on. One thing you'll notice is your fingers start to stain red. You get covered in the blood of St. John's, so to speak. Those are the flavonoid groups in there that do that. In fact, when you put this in alcohol, it's like magic. Within two minutes, poof, the tincture is bright, bright red. Same thing happens with the oil. You get a nice red oil. The European folklore around this herb suggests that it was used for things like insanity and epilepsy and schizophrenia and applied when there are spooks or demons or ghosts in the house. So we can use this as a protective plant when we're feeling a little out of our body and out of our centers and out of our flow in our life. So you might hang this like Hypericum is to hang above the altar or we might use it like the perforatum says to help all those perforated psychic energies to give us a whole complete blocked out and clean psychic field so that we can go about doing our work, finding that core purpose in our solar plexus so that we are empowered and ready to move forward in our lives. Now homeopathically and as a flower essence, St. John's Wort is used for psychological trauma and damage, especially when there is anxiety around a situation that has occurred. Say something like a car accident or a traumatic childbirth or being cut by a scalpel even. This can help release that emotional stagnation around the blockage of an injury or some type of traumatic experience. Now this plant has been used by a lot of different herbalists in a lot of different ways. And so we can find a panacea of benefits. But one of my favorite teachings is from Matthew Matthew Woods, who talks about how this is useful for the solar plexus and for self-esteem. It's helping build that back in a person to bring them up to that empowerment space. So I think this plant's gonna help bring us a little more self-empowered vigor and energy so that we don't get crashed with those low moods and we can stay up working and doing our best with a sense of purpose and drive. Whether you have various skin conditions, pain, nervous trauma, emotional upset, or seasonal affective disorder, this might be the perfect herb for you. So get out and check out your St. John's Wort. And remember that herbal medicine is people's medicine. This is right there in your backyard. So get out and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. You know all that work I thought I had to do? Doesn't seem so daunting anymore. Thank you, St. John's Wort. Ah, oh, now that's just what I needed. Time to get back to it. In the darkest of hours, we find sunbeams climbing through those clouds so that we can find rainbows that bless us the light of St. John's.